Today I wanted to show you a way to prevent water damage if your sump pump fails. This was something that I figured out a few years ago and I figured I'd show you what I did and how it works. For anybody that had a reason to put a sump pump in, you probably know why this is important. I can tell you for me, I learned firsthand when I bought my first house and it had um, a finished basement and uh, for the first year I had it, house was fine. Uh, a year later, um, walked down, it had carpet on the floor, squish, 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 and uh, water everywhere. And so um, basically required me to rip out the whole basement, all the flooring, whatnot. And when I ripped down the walls, um, I noticed that the previous homeowners had hidden a sump pump behind the walls that there was no way to get to and no way to even know it was there. So they had failed. So anyways, I don't want to talk too much about that because the more I talk about it, it gives me a little bit mad. But, um, but luckily, my dad, who was just very good with this kind of stuff, he helped me and we fixed it up. But we actually put a couple sump pumps in and so that took care of the damage. So anyways, I was looking at this current house that I'm living in and uh, touring with my real estate agent and I saw this corded wire coming from underneath the carpet and into the wall in the finished uh, game room. And so the first thing I think, this is a sump pump. And so I asked about it and uh, there was one in there and according to the home owners, they had this issue fixed a few years ago and it wasn't a problem. I really didn't smell any mildew so I wasn't worried about that and they said that they had a, um, they had a warranty on it, lifetime warranty that would replace anything. So obviously I checked and uh, it, it, that's true and it was transferable to a new owner. Of course the issue is if the water, uh, the sump pump fails, uh, there's going to be water damage and uh, the biggest problem is is they would cover a new pump uh, but the damage would be a whole issue so i was very concerned about this and i thought what could i do to prevent a future problem you know with if this one sump pump fails you know in my old house um, we had put in a, a more than one sump pump so if one failed the other one could pick up um, from it so that was not uh, the big of an issue but with this one i was worried about so i was looking at my options and um, there's some the backup pumps and whatnot, but the biggest thing uh, that I was considering was one is if I did anything to change what I currently had that was going to probably void the warranty and two I wasn't sure how long I was going to live in this house and so I looked at all my options and I found one that was under $20 and that's what I'm going to show you today. But first I want to welcome you to my channel, How To With Kevin, where of course I'm Kevin. And on this channel we talk about all kinds of things that we can do to learn things to make life easier, to save money, and I'm really glad to have you here. So I just want to ask you one little favor up front. As you're watching this video, if you find it helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Um, this is actually my second channel and my first one has well, over 17,000 subscribers. This one has had a lot of views, it's doing really well, um, but because of the nature we do a lot of different things. We do some home improvements, some computer things, um, some household kind of things. I can get why not everybody wants to subscribe because they look for one thing and they move on, but it really would help me if you find this video helpful um, if you subscribe because what I do is I look to see which videos are most popular, who's subscribing to the videos, and then that's where I'll sort of lean to make it new videos. So uh, as you're watching the video, again, no pressure, but if you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Love to have you on board. All right, so back to this video. So my solution to monitor for possible failure of the sump pump, you know, that could cause a lot of water damage and some flooding in my, you know, finished game room, um, was to use this very cheap battery operated water alarm. And I'm going to show you how I set it up with this pump, sump pump in a minute. Um, but anyways, I got the idea for doing this video because I was just doing a little preventive maintenance by changing the battery and I figured I'd show you how I did it. So first of all, the water alarm is named the Basement Watchdog, and the model number is PWDHWA, which I guess really isn't a number, but model letters. So the model letters, or the model is, again, uh, BWDHWA. Anyway, just so you know, I'm not being sponsored for this video. I'm just showing you the product that I used. If you're interested in buying the Basement Watchdog for yourself, I've added a link to make it easy for you to find, and you can still get it for under $20, so it's very cost-effective. And because it's battery operated, it's just a 9 volt battery, so you don't have to worry about doing any crazy wiring. So what this monitor does is it notices if there's like a little bit of standing water, and it says up to 1 30 seconds of an inch, so just a very little bit of water. So what it does is if it senses that water, it lets off a loud 110 decibels alarm that can be heard pretty much throughout the house. And again, we'll, we'll test that. And, um, and something else to keep in mind is that the wire that goes to this is a 6 foot wire um, so that you can get it to the sump pit and into, um, you know, onto the wall. And again, you can actually add more wire to the sensor. They say up to 100 feet. Um, that's not included, but you could do that if you wanted to. All right, so let me show you how I set everything up and how it works. 
And um, so to make this quicker, I already took with this sump pump cover had four bolts. I took three of them out and loosened the fourth one just so you could see how that works. Um, and then underneath this cover is the sump pit. Okay. And what you will see here, obviously, um, this is the cord that goes to the pump. And, um, and this is the wire that we will test. Um, and if you look down here, this is the sensor and we're going to test this. Um, but first of all, I just want to show you again how the sump pump works. And because the important thing is, is you want the sensor to be above where the sump pump would actually start pumping the water. Because if it's below that, then obviously it's, the alarm's going to go off and you don't want that unless it goes past where the water should go when the pump works. That way, you know, if the alarm happens, then it's definitely because the sump pump isn't working. So let's do a little test here. All right, so I got a little bit of water. And of course, when we're testing it, the water was pretty low, so uh, it takes a second bucket here. So let's put some more in here. Probably gonna take a third. Oh, that actually, there it goes. You can hear it. Some pump, pull pumping the water out. Okay, so again, you can see no alarm. No alarm went off <laughs> because again, the, um, the alarm sensor is set to be higher than when the water level should be. Okay, so now let's test it if water was to hit it, meaning that this pump failed and so the water went higher than where it should pump out. All right, because this can get loud here, I'm gonna cover my ears up. And what I have here is a little tray of water so that when the sensor is in there, um, just so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, and as soon as I take it away, it stops. Again, let's one more time just to hear it. Okay, and that's your sensor. Now, I don't know how loud it's gonna come across um, the video, but again, it's pretty loud. And so it'll keep going off until either the battery dies or um, you, know, you, you address it. So what I did is I took the wire that goes to the sensor, um, took it around and took some, um, some electrical tape, just wrapped it around here. You can see it's holding pretty good. Not that you know the water's out, so it needs standing water. So I'm just gonna take the water off just anyways. Um, just let it hang but again it's at a level that's higher than where the pump goes off what i did was i took the wire lowered it down to again to above that level um, but enough space i'm going to go to too high here because i wanted to have some time if the water goes that i can get rid of it and so i could do that with like a shop vac or wet dry vac and just suck the water out until in my situation i can call the company that has the warranty and then they can replace all that's fixed. And meanwhile, there's no water damage anywhere because I'm catching the water uh, well before it would breach the top and go into the carpet. And again, when I'm all done, I put everything together so you can see it. Um, but again, wire is just wrapped around the pipe, tape around there, okay? So let me put this back together again and then I will um, show you a little bit more on how I just attached it to the wall, okay? And so again, the cords, are lined up, line up here. All right, and then the last thing to do is show you how I mounted it. So um, I got the baseboard back in place here. And what I did was 
just put a little screw in there and you can see that a screw will fit right into this hole. And this is one of the hardest parts of the project is finding that little hole and got it and then slide it down. Okay. And then that's laying right on top there. Okay. All right, so got everything back together again, got the carpet laid down, got the, um, the baseboards back, put this little shelf thing back here. Um, and again, it's just my way to show you how to prevent water damage if your sump pump fails, so you don't have any flooding, you know, any kind of water getting through your finished basement areas or your game rooms. So uh, hopefully you found this helpful. All right, so now I guess what I'm interested in is do you guys have any thoughts or comments on the project or if you have any questions? Uh, if you do, let me know in the comments section. Anyway, so there you go. I hope you liked the video and if you did, please like it. And if you enjoy doing a variety of DIY projects, definitely consider subscribing and also follow me on Instagram. And if you're interested in investing in financial types of videos, check out my first channel, Healthy, Wealthy and Wise. I'll link that and the basement watchdog for you in the description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.